Welcome to TransLogic, I'm Jonathan Buckley. For the past 25 years we've been promised hoverboards thanks in no small part to a big budget sequel that took us back to the future again. Well, the future is now and hoverboards are finally here. Well, I'm feeling very fortunate to be sitting next to the founder of Arcs Packs and the creator of the Hendo Hoverboard. When your video came out, people realised this isn't a hoax, this thing actually exists. The internet blew up. We picked the hoverboard as the, the way to convey this technology and what's possible. To be able to handle a dynamic payload, to be able to hover in a stationary position or move around. Electromagnetic repulsion isn't exactly new, but you guys have harnessed it, it seems, in a different way and made it uh, accessible. If we could sum it up in a single word, it's about efficiency. Yep. Although there are uh, other ways to hover things, or there was no good way to do that for a stationary object, particularly with this a passive surface. We have a copper surface right now. Talking to some of the engineers around here, there are other options as well that you guys are exploring. Exactly. We're talking like even you could put potentially like a little bit of dirt over it, grow grass over the top. And this is the kind of thing that gives me goosebumps. Okay. <laughs> Imagine yeah. uh, greenways versus highways. I'm here with Kyle O'Neill, one of the engineers here at Arcs Packs. Now, when you guys were funding the hoverboard, you had a very successful Kickstarter campaign. And for a certain donation, you could receive one of these guys. It's called the White Box? Yes, it's our developer kit we had on Kickstarter. It's the generic embodiment of our hover technology. So the technology inside this very plain looking white box is sure. the same kind of technology that you have in the hoverboard. Yeah, that's correct. So it's the same thing. You know, we can go smaller, we can go bigger. Uh, we can hold different payloads, different hover heights. All right, so take me through the basic technology of what's going on inside. Here. We have the four hover engines inside that create the primary magnetic field, and when passing over this non-ferromagnetic conductive surface. So this is just copper plated in vinyl. It's inducing an eddy current, which is then creating an opposing magnetic field. And that gives us the hovering. All right, uh, can we switch it on, does it? Yeah, absolutely. Wow, so it, it kind of makes a little bit of noise. A little bit of noise. It almost sounds like there's a fan inside spinning. Yeah, yeah, so no fans. I mean, you can kind of look at the bottom, and there are no fans underneath. We just have our hover engines that are creating the magnetic field. I can just see YouTube videos now with everybody's pets. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got to say, I'm feeling pretty privileged to be standing on what I guess is the first iteration. I mean, you guys have been working on it for a while and you've done various yep. incarnations of it, sure. but this is the first real... This is the first real kind of working and stable one. This is the one you, you know, everyone's seen online. And yeah. It's kind of been known as the handle hoverboard, but it's still the beginning of kind of where we're going. When it comes to battery life, is that a concern with the hoverboard? Is it something that drains batteries? Oh, absolutely, yeah. So right now this is using 16.4S, so 64 LiPo cells. Yep. By comparison, like a Tesla car uses around 7,000. We still have a long way to go in, in terms of efficiency, but right now this hoverboard uh, gives you about seven minutes with a person on it. Yep. Again, so weight is gonna be a factor in total battery life, but around seven minutes. All right, well, let's fire it up. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> that was fun. When it comes to the, to the hoverboard that we have right now that uh, I've actually had a chance to ride. Yeah, quite well. Thoroughly. I, I understand he actually did a, a shove it. I was, uh, well done. Yeah, there you go. I was thoroughly impressed. The, the, <laughs> uh, the amount of control that I had was surprising. Just how intuitive it was when I, when I got on there, it wasn't that hard at all. What people might not realise is there are a lot of other applications for this technology which can be used in all kinds of environments. There is 
transportation, entertainment and recreation, including extreme sports, industrial automation. There is seismic isolation. I'm assuming that's kind of like a damping system for a building during an earthquake? Even better. Yeah. An earthquake happens. We have 20 seconds to work with. In the first few seconds, the hover engines start, the landing gear retracts, the ground shakes, the shaking stops, the landing gear drops, and no one in that room experienced any shaking at all. Anything at all? Yeah, absolute seismic isolation. Isolation. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so it's October 21st, 2015. My hoverboard arrives in the mail. Where do I go and ride it? Is there a plan for skate parks in the works? Absolutely. Imagine, if you, if you will, a conventional skateboard park that's yeah. been retrofitted to allow for hover technology. It's still skateboardable, right? Yeah. So uh, having a dual-use park makes a lot of sense. And is it purely copper overlaid over the park surface? There are other systems that we're working on. Aluminum works very well, too. Right. Um, not quite as efficient, though. Yeah. What are those, some of the things that you you can see that need improvement? Some people have talked about that it makes a bit of noise. The production hoverboard that we will deliver in October will be more efficient than the current one. Yep. Uh, in all likelihood, it will be lighter, it will be smaller, it will be quieter and more powerful. Our first 10, now 11, buyers purchased their boards, I think it was around the $10,000 mark for the initial run of boards. Yes. Uh, how, over time, do we reduce those costs? As we optimise, as we make the systems more efficient, they're coming down in price. And it comes out on the 21st of the 10th, 2015. So it's a fairly significant date, I think, for a, a product such as a hoverboard. And, and no accident. And no accident. You must get it brought up all the time. The Back to the Future must have been. Is that the big inspiration behind you or just one of? When we first figured out we could hover something, that came to mind. We can build a hoverboard. Marty McFly, Back to the Future 2, that was 1989, yep. helped shape how we thought about things yeah. and um, where we are now. <laughs> wow. That's how it feel. That's incredible. I can't believe you guys have managed to do this already. Like, to be 2015 and we actually have a hoverboard that yeah, works. It's real. There's a couple of things, I guess, when I went into this today, I thought, you know, it's going to be way too slippery and I'm probably just going to fall straight off the back and I'm going to have zero control. But it's actually not the case. It actually works really, yeah. really well. And when you lean, you can get it to turn. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Certain just ways. Just a little bit. Yep. Man, well, we have a long way to go. 2015 is going to be a big, big year for Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Tell you what, can't wait to see what's in store for the hoverboard. For Trans Logic, I'm Jonathan Buckley. We'll catch you next time.